infused unnecessary partners, partisanship into the process. Now is not the time to fix the blame. It's time to fix the problem. That's Senator McCain. Now let's go to Senator Obama. A package has not yet passed. Uh, and so one of the messages that I have uh, to Congress is get this done. Democrats, Republicans, step up to the plate, get it done, and understand that even as you get it done to stabilize the markets, we have more work to do to make sure that Main Street is getting the same kind of help that Wall Street's getting. We cannot forget who this is for. This is for the American people. This shouldn't be so for a few insiders. And yet Barack Obama, at least according to Congressman Kucinich, Rob Johnson was against any bankruptcy reform when he says, let's make sure mainstream gets what uh, Wall Street gets. I think that uh, that is what's on the record, unfortunately. But perhaps uh, Barack Obama, who I think is a young and bright person, will read the shifting sands. And in the next five weeks, we may see a much more progressive response from him. And uh, that, uh, maybe I'm being a little bit hopeful there. But uh, that's what that's what there is that potential. Bruce Marks, you're laughing. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is that's the most fundamental issue. I think what Rob and I would agree on is that you know the the bankruptcy, just the ability for working people to use this, the bankruptcy system, like corporations and like wealthy people can do, is fundamental. And that was the one thing where the lenders pushed back the hardest, and he backed off. And that's really disappointing, like what the leadership is doing out there. But I, but also, it's really important to say that it's the people. And that's what, you know, everything has been put in line. I mean, the leadership of the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, and the administration, and in Congress, has lined up. And they had one problem, the American people. And they haven't been able to get past the American people. So what's really important, Amy, is everybody who's listening and watching you today, call up their congressmen. Call them up today and saying, hell no, do not vote for this bill. Do not vote for this Wall Street bailout. And we're winning. We're winning. And we just have to kill this thing on Thursday, and then we can really focus on the home ownership. Please, let's not talk about CEO pay. That is a red herring. That is that's a diversion from the fundamental issue. Because, yes, it's outrageous that they get their money, but they've gotten their money. We should prosecute them and throw them in jail. That's where they belong. For what? But, because it's fraud, it's deception, it's exploitation, it's discrimination, it's all those things. And they made hundreds of millions of dollars, and they should be in jail. They should be prosecuted. But let's focus on the issue right now, which is kill this bill. There's no making it better at this point. We got to give ourselves some breathing room to do that. So people can go to our website at NACA.com or they can go to other places out there, but call your congressman let, and stop it. Let me ask you something. Um, the vice presidential debate is Thursday night between yes. uh, Palin and Biden. And, you know, a lot is being said about whether Palin can you know, handle the economy issues, to handle the foreign policy issues. But Biden was behind um, the uh, push for bankruptcy bill. Explain right. what that bankruptcy bill did. Sure. I mean, what, what it does is, and what it does, and it's really, it's really crucial because it says that if you are a homeowner at risk of foreclosure and you file bankruptcy, you can have the bankruptcy judges, which are not the liberal activist uh, judges out there, have the authority to say that they'll cram down the mortgage or reduce the interest payments on that, which means that if you cannot afford, because if the judge looks at that and says, this is by definition an unaffordable mortgage and should never have happened, that they can reduce that um, mortgage amount from maybe 500000 to 400000 to keep that homeowner in their home to do that. They can cram it down, what's called. So, but now they don't have the authority to do that. They're prevented from doing that. Now, if you have a second home, and that second home is at risk of foreclosure, they can do it on that. They can do it on every other type of mortgage out there, but they can't do it on someone's primary residence where they live. It's an outrage. And the point is that they say, well, well, you hear the recriticism, well, we don't want that the bankruptcy judges, they'll be overwhelmed. The fact of the matter is, 
if the homeowners threaten to go into bankruptcy, that forces the servicers and the investors to negotiate on a level playing field and gives the homeowner more rights and a little bit more influence to make that mortgage affordable. But the bankruptcy bill made it much harder for people to declare bankruptcy, made it much easier for the credit card companies. I mean, this was a gift to the credit card companies to squeeze people. This Absolute. was Biden's bill. He was a major force behind it, the Delaware Absolute. Senate. And and it's a pox on everybody. What they have been doing, the bidding for Wall Street, both parties, and now, they're, now they have to be held accountable. So right. we're, we're not standing up here and saying that Biden or um, Obama or Ray McCain, that anyone has been that much more aggressive out there in re representing homeowners who are at risk of foreclosure. We got to focus on uh, keeping people in their homes right now. By the way, I said that we were going to talk about the U.S. attorney scandal report that came out of the Justice Department with Murray Wass. We're going to save that for tomorrow. This discussion is too important. Rob Johnson. Uh, you'd mentioned the debate between Biden and Palin. And one could feel sad for the American people right now. They're seeming to have to choose between someone who may not be expert on the issues, but seems to have the heart of rebellion in her appearance and in her style versus a man who's been Mr. Inside and has the expertise. The problem is when you defer to experts, you got to ask, as the old government song was, uh, who's going to watch the man that watches the man that watches me? And who's watching Joe Biden? Who's watching these experts? Who are they working for? Are they working for rewards from the wealthy and powerful or are they working to represent the people? Rob Johnson, yeah. what do you think has to be done now? And what about Nancy Pelosi? Where does she fit in here? Uh, Nancy Pelosi created an opportunity by not pushing the Democrats to support this bad bill, which could have been suicidal for many House members. Uh, what she needs to do now is to step away from the financial committees and understand that the emerging reputation for the Democratic Party is not about the inside baseball that Barney Frank and Chris Dodd are forced to play with the money politics and the whole history of those committees. They have to have a larger vision of what Democrats represent to the people, and they have to throw away the Paulson bill. Are they going to do this, given you're talking about now, uh, you know, maybe the most important race in U.S. history, the 2008 presidential race, and the most expensive presidential race in U.S. history, the level of reliance on these very same corporations that you're talking about penalizing, that these parties, that the Democratic Republican Party feed off of? Yes. Probabilistically, I'm pessimistic. But I but think our going. job now is to develop a vision and an alternative that people can seize on that is good policy. I think there's going to be a great temptation, particularly among the leaders of the financial committees, to make a deal to get 12 more 